pH scale is likely a vague memory from your school chemistry lessons. But that pH scale gets a lot more interesting when you realise it has a profound effect on how your skin looks and feels. So in today's video we're going to talk about what pH is, why it matters and how you can cultivate a pH that promotes clear, beautiful skin. So a quick hello if this is the first video bringing you here. My name is Fiona and I'm a registered nutritionist with a master's degree in nutritional medicine. On this channel we talk about nutritional skincare because true skincare begins with what you put on your plate. If this sounds like something that interests you, please consider subscribing. Right, so let's get into this. What is pH? So pH is a scale that measures how acidic or alkaline something is. The scale runs from 0 to 14 with 7 being neutral, anything under 7 is acidic and anything over 7 is alkaline. We come across different pH values in everyday life as you can see and an easy way to remember this is that acidic things like lemon juice tend to taste sour whereas alkaline things tend to taste bitter but obviously do not try drain cleaner in an attempt to test that. Now most people think that their bodies are alkaline or that they want them to be alkaline because of their various health trends that have encouraged that in the past. But here's the thing, certain parts of your body are very acidic and they're meant to be. That includes your stomach, your vagina if you have one, and also your skin. What is your skin's pH? So normal healthy skin has a pH of between 4.1 to 5.8. That means it's roughly as acidic as soured cream. And you really want your skin to be like soured cream. Not only does more acidic skin age more slowly, but the right pH supports a strong skin barrier and aids in skin repair, which translates to calmer, smoother, glowier, younger looking skin. The right pH also helps to keep your skin bacteria in balance. And if you've ever had something like like fungal acne or dandruff or even a staph infection, you know how important that is. Now research has linked a disrupted skin pH with several skin conditions. These include dry and sensitive skin, acne, eczema, psoriasis and nappy rash in little ones. Now just to be clear, that doesn't mean that an out of whack pH is the sole cause of these conditions, but it's an important feature in their development. What disrupts skin pH? Now if left alone, your skin is always trying to get back to an acidic state. But lots of things can interfere with that, some of which you can't control, but some of which you can. So the things you can't control are your sex, your age and your ethnicity, all of which influence skin pH. The things you can control are the skincare you use and the food that you eat. So let's look at the skincare you use for a moment. Anything that is soap based or sudsy or foaming is likely alkaline and is going to disrupt your skin's pH. In fact, just a single wash with soap can raise your skin pH from a happy 4.5 to a slightly less happy 7.5. And when you consider that a change of just 0.5 pH units affects your skin's function, you realise this is a pretty big deal for your complexion. Now your skin does have a buffer system to help bring the pH back down, but have you ever noticed that after a period of repeated washing, your skin gets tight and dry and maybe even a little rough? That means your buffer function is struggling. And actually research shows that repeatedly using alkaline cleansers or using leave-on alkaline products can push your skin pH up over the longer term. And as you know, that can lead to a whole host of skin concerns. The second factor you can control is the food that you eat. Now the food that you eat is literally providing the raw materials for your body to make this acid layer from the inside out. This is relatively new and fascinating science which we will come on to a bit more in a bit. Now before we talk about how to optimize your skin pH, let's just cover how you know if your skin pH is disrupted. Now this is actually quite simple, just ask yourself how your skin looks and how it feels. Does your skin look dull or red or a bit irritated? Do you have acne or eczema? And does it feel tight and dry and almost like your skin is too small for you? If so, you might have a disrupted skin pH and we're going to cover what you can do to help bring it back into balance. Let's start with the skincare you use and then we'll move on to what to eat. So there are three principles to bear in mind. The first one is to avoid using anything soap-based or sudsy or foaming 
on your face. Plain old soap and water has a pH of 12, which is very alkaline, and sodium lauryl sulfate, which is a very common foaming ingredient in cleansers is a known acid mantle stripper and again it pushes your skin pH up. Now we do have newer generation foaming ingredients things like sodium lauryl glucose carboxylate which actually are acidic but they're still pretty stripping and the less hydrated your skin the higher its pH will become. You are much better off cleansing with a gentle moisturizing non-foaming cleanser or even using oil to oil cleanse your face. The second principle is to look for pH balanced products. Now these are products that have been formulated with the physiological pH in mind. So they typically sit somewhere between four and a half and six and a half on the pH scale, which is still acidic. Now just tune in to how your skin feels after using these products. Does your skin feel comfortable and moisturized? If so, great, carry on. But does your skin feel dry and tight and a bit irritated? If so, the pH might still be too high for you and you might want to try something else. Third principle is to add an acid to your skincare routine. Now this is only after you've got the first two steps down because you do not want to be adding an acid to irritated skin or a compromised skin barrier. A good choice is lactic acid because this is comparatively gentle but still effective. You also have glycolic acid which is stronger so you might need to go a bit more carefully with it but it does penetrate deeper. Now obviously acids are going to help create an acidic pH on your skin but they're not your only option. Vitamin C serums also tend to be acidic because they have to be to work and so is Manuka honey believe it or not and Manuka honey can be a really nice option if you want to gently bring down the pH of your skin. You can apply a Manuka honey mask two or three times a week. So that is your skincare covered. Remember these three principles when you're buying your skincare and I will pop some example skincare products in the description box below for you. Moving on to how to optimize your skin pH with food. Now I find this fascinating and we have three research back principles to help you. The first one is to eat a range of colorful plant-based foods. Now I am not saying eat an exclusively plant-based diet. I'm just saying that however you choose to eat, make sure it includes lots of colorful plant-based foods. That's things like nuts and seeds and fruits and vegetables and pulses and legumes. A Korean study showed that the more of these types of foods people tend to eat, the more acidic their skin is. And I'm going to go out on a limb here and suggest that your gut bacteria are involved in this. My hypothesis is that your gut bacteria are munching on the fiber in these foods and creating special fatty acids which travel to your skin and help to acidify it. Now that's study hasn't been done yet but once it has and we all know it to be true just remember you heard it here first. I always say that we should all work up to having half a plate full of vegetables at every meal, but just start with where you're at. Even if you can add one extra piece of fruit or one extra vegetable into your day, you're doing really well. The second principle is to eat foods that your great grandmother would have eaten for breakfast. That's things like whole eggs and full fat milk and butter and oily fish and maybe even a bit of liver. That's because all of these foods are rich in preformed vitamin A or retinol and again another study shows that the more vitamin A people tend to eat the more acidic their skin is. You'll notice that a lot of these foods have fallen out of favor and I'll bet that you don't eat that many of them so where can you start adding them in? Could you have a whole egg omelet for breakfast a few times a week? Could you choose mackerel or salmon for dinner or could you even stir a tiny bit of liver pate into a bolognese sauce? You won't taste the liver you'll just get a richer sauce. It's worth paying attention to these but because foods rich in retinol are fantastic for your skin. They help to regulate your skin's oil production, which in turn helps to influence its pH. And thirdly, eat fermented foods. So another Korean study showed that when people took a probiotic extracted from kimchi, their skin became more acidic after 12 weeks. On average, their skin went from about 5.2 to 4.8. The levels of lactate on their skin also went up by a quarter. And that's important because lactate is is what's helping to create this acid layer and it also promotes collagen synthesis. Remember, more acidic skin is younger looking skin. Now that study used a probiotic supplement just because they are easier to quantify and control in a clinical setting. But you can likely achieve a similar effect through eating naturally fermented foods which are rich in lactic acid bacteria. Good choices include kimchi, 
and kefir. And actually kefir has been shown to improve both acne and eczema, which are two conditions that are linked with an abnormal skin pH. I've done a whole video on kefir, which I will link up here for you. Now the really cool thing about fermented foods is that you do not need to eat much to see an effect. Literally two tablespoons of kimchi a day or 100 milliliters of kefir a day is enough. So those are your three diet principles for a happy acidic skin pH. Those are really going to help move the needle over the longer term. So to sum up, you really, really want an acidic skin pH. You can achieve this by having a strategic skincare routine and by eating foods that promote acidic skin from the inside out. I hope you found that interesting. Now I know eating for the right skin pH is a pretty niche topic but I hope you found it helpful and also empowering. If you like this video you might like another one I've done on supplements for a strong skin barrier which I'll link here for you. I hope to see you there otherwise I'll see you next time for another video on nutritional skincare.